Super Monkey Ball is an incredibly simple idea. Poor little monkeys are trapped in airtight balls, they can probably breathe but it isn't specified, and all you have to do is roll them to the goal. Yet somehow the original two games in the Expanded Deluxe took that premise and molded it into one of the very best games I've ever played. Everything was polished to a shimmering gleam, the stage design, the visual and audio feedback, and most importantly, how it feels to move in 3D space. But every single one of those points is something the series has severely struggled with since. It has come close to those beats of greyness, but more often than not, it's hitting incredibly low lows. So how is such a simple idea executed so poorly repeatedly? Well, it all comes down to the engine. In the first games, everything works as you'd expect. So much so that finishing the game in a linear fashion is more like the tutorial. The meta of Monkey Ball is exploiting the stages, moving the monkey in ways the developer likely never even intended. Check out some speedruns if you haven't before. People do bananas things in these games. This also extends to the party games, which may seem like completely different experiences, but whether you're playing billiards or flying through the sky in Monkey Target, the importance of physics and momentum is still at the forefront of the entire experience. It's been 19 long years since Monkey Ball 2, and I've gone on to finish every game in the series out of admiration for what I loved in the past, even though for most of them, it's been a pretty bad experience. But the future has never looked so promising. Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania is here, and it aims to bring everything we loved about the originals back, just with a new coat of paint and a ton of quality of life improvements. The heart is clearly here, everything looks right, and that's why it hurts so much to say that this isn't quite the return to form we were hoping it would be. Banana Mania is a good game, and if this is your first time diving into the series, you'll probably still have a lot of fun. But unfortunately, it's remaking something that we hold to an incredibly high standard, and it must be judged by those standards. My first impressions were positive. The game greets you with a banger of a theme song, and as you jump into the story or challenge modes, you'll be taken straight back to the launch days of the GameCube. They remade all 300 stages across Monkey Ball 1, 2, and even the new stages of Deluxe as faithfully as possible. Only a few minor changes here and there. And if you don't want any changes, there's an unlockable level pack presenting them exactly as they were in their original states. Content-wise, they've thought of everything. The original games only had four playable characters, but the base roster of Banana Mania has been tripled to 12, not counting DLC. Yan Yan and Doctor are obvious inclusions, but less obvious are B from Jet Set Radio and Kiryu from Yakuza. What's more, they feel strangely at home rolling around in balls. Remember Jam and Jet? Of course you don't, they debuted in Monkey Ball 3D and weren't even fully playable in their own game. Just a few party games no one played because they were very bad. We'd be surprised if anyone has any love for these characters, but the fact that they're here is amazing. This truly feels like a passion-filled celebration of Monkey Ball's 20-year legacy. This clearly isn't some cheap cash-in to make the most of assets lying around from Banana Blitz HD. It's undoubtedly the best Monkey Ball has been since Deluxe. But it all comes back to that engine. The original's physics were so precise, and as soon as you boot up Monkey Target and Banana Mania, it's clear something is very, very wrong. You still roll off a ramp and use your ball as a set of wings to glide your way towards the target, but it simply doesn't feel right. You can probably see it doesn't feel right. The movement is no longer an extension of the main game, it's loose and messy. Worst of all, the physics and the momentum feel cheated. If you simply walk off the ramp as slowly as possible, the game will still play a launch animation as if you ran off. You won't get very far, but the animation is part of the problem. Even when running properly at full speed, the jump off the ramp feels scripted. As you jump off, you have no control, and it doesn't feel good. The satisfying momentum is gone. If you're a fan of the series, you know how important Monkey Target is. I'm sure plenty of us have played it more than the main game, and it's incredibly disappointing to say this version isn't good enough. It's better than that found in Banana Blitz and Banana Splits, but it's not one of the best multiplayer games of all time. A high standard to meet for sure, but whether it's fair or not, that is the standard. Other party games fare a little better. Monkey Bowling can still be a lot of fun with its wacky special lanes, and while Monkey Fight doesn't feel quite as good, it can still be decent fun. Almost all of them come with little caveats. They are fine, and when playing with friends, you're bound to still have a good time, but they no longer feel like they're cut from the same cloth as the main game, and that's what made them so fun in the first place. And that's a shame, because in comparison, the main game actually holds up very well. The stages are still incredibly well crafted, and while the engine isn't flexible enough to pull off every outrageous skip, you can still exploit them in fun and chaotic ways. Treated merely as a fun romp, Banana Mania can be very enjoyable, and there's plenty it does even better than the originals. 
In Monkey Ball 2 Story Mode, Ai Ai was weirdly the only playable character, even though the rest of the cast was right there in the cutscenes. But now, play as anyone you want, even Hello Kitty, if, if that's what you desire. When you fall off or start a stage, it now takes mere moments to get back. The flow's much faster. And the accessibility features are awesome. You can slow down the game speed, double the timer, and display arrows showing exactly where the goal is. These are entirely optional, but greatly appreciated for those who need them. This is far from a waste of a remake. It's filled with great ideas that improve the surrounding pillars of Monkey Ball. And if anything, it's just great to have a game on the Switch that isn't Banana Blitz. We've all had moments where we found ourselves in a tough position to physically move around and turn the camera. But now, just move it freely. The default sensitivity is a little low, but crank that thing up and it starts to feel really good. Although in some instances, cranking it down can be helpful too. A particular path was too narrow to cross, but bringing the sensitivity all the way down to the bottom allowed me to line myself up perfectly. There are more options than there's ever been, and they all make the experience more pleasant. To be honest, we were initially excited by the absence of lives, but it does impact the enjoyment of challenge mode. The extra floors used to be a reward for those who made their way through without continue, for those who have mastered and memorized the entire set. But now there are jarring difficulty spikes for everyone, no matter how much you've mastered the courses. You can fall and fall and fall, but the set won't finish until you've played the hardest levels in the game. That is unless you use the accessibility options. In a sense, it robs it of purpose. But not completely, however. The game features leaderboards, and these completely change the competitive dynamic. We're proud to say that, as of this review, we are officially the greatest Monkey Ball players in the entire world. That is until all of you played the game. Suddenly, challenge mode makes far more sense when you're attempting to perfect each stage as fast as possible. The skill ceiling is bound to be high, but competing with friends? That's gonna be heated. For me, online ranking is Banana Mania at its very best. The developers are truly encouraging you to break the stages as best you can. It absolutely has its positive points, but there are still moments where the main game feels considerably less than what came before. The sound design is a key one. I actually really like the new tracks, and the original score is available via DLC, uh, but it's the sound effects themselves that feel stagnant. The original conveyed a feeling of friction and speed when rolling at a high velocity, but Banana Mania sounds much more bubbly and safe. Worst of all, the rolling sounds completely stop when you reach a certain speed. It eradicates any sense of high stakes movement. It just feels flat. There's a few hints of visual charm missing too. In the first Monkey Ball, when you clear a stage, the next one appears above you as you fly into the sky and go towards it. But now, it's just an empty void in the sky with nothing. And in the original Monkey Target, the camera would follow you as you go further and further into the depths of the ocean, but now, it just zooms in very awkwardly into a low-res wave. And the elaborate cutscenes from Monkey Ball 2 have been reimagined in fairly cheap skits with floating cutouts of characters, and they barely last a few seconds. And look, I'm not saying the first game was a cinematic masterpiece, but this new interpretation feels like nothing. Also weirdly missing is multiplayer for the main game. Granted, you took turns in the original, but I played this for hours and hours back on GameCube, and I was hoping it would come back with split screen or something, but instead, it's missing entirely. It's disappointing when a package that gets so many surrounding elements right stumbles with its core pillars. Moving AI around just doesn't look, sound, or feel as good as it used to. And even though what's here is serviceable in its own right, we've experienced better. There's still plenty to like. If you've managed to enjoy any Monkey Ball game post deluxe, then rest assured, this is better than any of them. But it's like remaking Donkey Kong Country without the rhythmic flow of bouncing off enemies. It's probably still fun, but it's surely not as good. It may not be saying much, but Monkey Ball Banana Mania is the best the series has been in almost two decades, and newcomers are bound to find a lot to love. It wears its heart on its sleeve, and clearly the team has a lot of passion for the franchise. It's packed full of content, new ways to play, and there are so many extras and improvements that never existed in the original game. But unfortunately, the engine isn't up to the job. What they've achieved here on Unity simply isn't on par with the original games, and while the main game is still enjoyable, many of the party games are severely hindered. Until Monkey Target returns to its former glory, we cannot truly say that Monkey Ball is back. We here at Nintendo Life give Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania a 7 out of 10. Anyway, if you've played it, let us know your thoughts on Banana Mania in the comments below, and let us know your thoughts in general. And of course, roll into that subscribe button, and we will see you next time. Bye everyone!